The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Welcome to the Tiger Technician's Hour, the Monday edition, Columbus Day edition. And uh, this is, always have to think about it, even though I've written it about 10 times already. This is Monday, October the 8th. Ha, into October already. And great two hours kicking off the uh, TFNN programming, and that was with Steve Rhodes and Tom O'Brien. Then we get my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, and then Larry Pesavento, and then we got Daryl Martin, we got uh, Dave White, we got Ken Shreve, and then back to Tom O'Brien, a full session of programming right here at T. F N N, and most importantly, we're looking at it down. This down a little, down twenty seven, at thirteen thousand five eighty two. The S and P's down five, a little bit more. So the Dow's down twenty one point two one percent, and the S P is down point thirty five percent at fourteen fifty five. A little bit deeper. You've got uh, you've got where did it disappear to? <laughs> Hold on a second, I'll get it right here. Slide it up. You got the Comp Index. Comp index is down 18 at 31170. Yeah. Apple, I'm going to show the chart of Apple in a moment. Apple is, I'll show the chart right now. I'll be talking about it. I've got it right there in front of you. If you're looking at Tiger TV, you'll see the pattern that I talk about. Let me just show. This is fantastic. Look. If you take the very wide, the, the left side, right side price time match from the, the April the 10th with the um, Apple hit 644 round number. Remember, I made a big deal about that. I said if it doesn't break on the upside of 644, we can be pulling back, and if it broke under 627, I think I said 627, uh, it's going to go much deeper. Well, it went all the way down to 522, no, 528, 66 on the 18th of May. Had a fantastic two buy modes in the Chapman Wave. Actually, three buy modes went to 680. Well, the first one went to... On the 10th of July, went to 619.87, pulls back to round number 570, doji low. Ha, that silent candle. And what happened, well, well doji candle that is, and then it rallies to a peak D at 680.57 on the, oh, whoops, yeah, 674.88 on the 21st of August. Pulls back a tad, walks the nine period moving average, and makes the pattern that I call a Chapman Wave flat base restart. And what does it do? It goes to another peak D. That's the one. That was a G. Two, three. Three of them to 699.36 on the. Ah, it goes even higher. I didn't update this. 703.99 was. Yeah, I did. 703.99, I just got the wrong color. Right there, making it red, because I think that this is a serious top. Right there on the 19th of September. And that was a peak D, and it pulls back. So the left side, right side price time match went to a particular candle that was in the middle of uh, June. And then you start the right side, and it broke out in a Chapman Wave cup and ladle formation right there on the both the 17th and 20th of August. But that also signaled... Be careful, this is what's called a flat base restart. In the Chapman Wave, that means that when you get your peak D or E or F in this particular pattern, there's almost, oh, I'm not going to give an exact percentage, but I'm going to say there's a really high probability. When I talk high probability, I'm really talking more than 70 to 75% of the time, that if that particular pullback starts to make the nine-period exponential moving average resistance very quickly, then you're looking at not just the pullback that takes out the, the, the signal, the buy signal on the left side, which is 648.11 on the 22nd of August, but it goes underneath. That's the bar that says, either this bar or the very next bar says, I've had enough. I've, I, I didn't have a chance to say goodbye to my friends back in the middle of the arch formation. I'm going to have a quick bounce, and then I'll be coming back down again. Well... We'll see, because what did it do today And exactly, well, no, I'm sorry, it is one day late. Ah, oh, excuse me, it's one day late. If Friday was the date was supposed to break 648, instead it went, it was three points higher. Today it smashes through and goes to three, 636. So this is the bar, let's look at the 120-minute chart. Yeah, 
trough F. This is the bar that says, be careful, because there could be a little bit of a bounce now that everybody's convinced that Apple's going down. It could be a, a bit of a, a bounce to kind of ameliorate some of the selling pressure. Now, it's interesting because the weekly chart also has the potential for a Chapman Wave flat base restart. Um, that would say that if this week and next week Apple closes underneath the nine-period moving average of 655, that's the whole week. You have to wait until Friday of both weeks. That will say, watch out. There's going to be a test of at least the 570 level, the low bar of the, of July. And if that breaks, then you're looking at a give back all the way down to 528. I'm just doing one thing at a time. All I can say is I'm in sell mode on Apple in the daily. I'm in a sell signal on Apple in the weekly with if there's a, a close below five or six fifty five this week, probably it's gonna be very close to a sell mode which is time and price in Apple. But more importantly I'm looking at the uh monthly chart which has a doji candle in peak E and that peak E says ha seven oh five oh seven let me print that out there seven oh five seven oh five point oh seven wrong color let me go to yellow and that says that the high of last month, doji candle, there's a particular technique that I use with candles. And that says, be careful, because if that, te that, that technique unfolds over the next week, uh, I'm sorry, and then over the next month in Apple, then the 594 level, nine period moving average, will become a magnet, attracting it to the downside. So now what we've got also, now let me just do this. You've got gold. I was asked if I would talk about gold. Let's just go straight to it right now. I've got gold, the GLD, at a very critical level. Yes, there could be an alternate wave counter. This is not peak a F, but a peak, a new peak B. But that will be completely negated, <coughs> excuse me, if in the next two days there's a close in the GLD below the candle of, the candle of the second, below 171.59. I believe that I need to consider that Apple is making a high-level consolidation, uh, Apple, gold, GLD, Spider Gold Trust, is making a high-level consolidation with tremendous resistance. I wonder if I can go to the white chart because I think I've done a little bit more on that. GLD, I'm getting so confused now with these white and black. I'm just trying, I spent such a long time over the weekend um, with these charts, even while I was traveling, I was, I was put, uh, putting up the charts, checking things out. Because I wanted to see what what reflects better, what what I can show you here um, that is kind of a compromise between the black charts that I still love. Every time I go back to the black charts, I just see in a split second, I see the peaks, the troughs, and etc. So a little, I, I'm getting used to it, much much more used to it in the uh, in the white background charts now. But I, I have to tell you, I still like those black background charts. It's just so clear. There's too much white here. That's the whole problem. So what I'm looking at, high-level consolidation in the GLD, probably between the high of the candle of September, the week of the uh, – no, that was on the, on the 26th, 170.05, and we're at 172.18, and the most recent high, which is 174.07. Let me just type that in, 174.07, 174. .07. And that says that if Apple, and I did, I was asked about the, the, the down arrow and what happens, what constitutes that inverted carrot. I, I'll try to get to it Wednesday. There's just so much to do right now. I, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I'm going to run the numbers and the run the numbers by saying, um, so gold, oh, I was asked about the, GL, the GLC. No, I have to do that because I was asked about it and I think I'm going to forget about it. GCZ, that's the December gold. I have exactly the same thing here in the December gold, an alternate wave count of either a G or a brand new B. This, the MACD is turning down just as it is because the GLD trades at one-tenth the price of uh, spot gold. So I've got this at a very critical level because the stochastics at 80%, that's okay. The unbalanced volume has given me a reversal signal. The MACD is negative. I'm not sure what's keeping gold up right now because if it holds up, it means price is the arbiter of trend. And if it holds while the technicals deteriorate, it means that the next rally in the technicals with the price should push the price much higher. If that, for, uh, if that doesn't take place, then the next 
pullback says you could make lower lows and lower highs. So I, all I can do is deal with the price. And right now, the price is holding pretty darn well. Down only, I've got, I'm, I'm a little behind, but I'm calling it minus 260 in the uh, GCZ December contract. But most importantly, I'm going to draw this in, and I'm going to draw it in as one potential, not the rectangle, which is what you would expect, but I'm going to draw the oval formation. The oval formation is potentially very bullish or very <laughs> bearish. <laughs> the very bullish is if it continues in the oval pattern, does not take out the left side low, which is very important, 738.30 on the 26th of September, the daily chart, but instead spikes above the previous high, which is 798.10, and that says you should be going higher to a leg, that'll be leg C, and you should still go to a leg D. With the MACD and stochastic so poor, I, I'm not sure what's holding it up, but that's what I'm looking at. When I look at the weekly chart of this, now why is it not showing up on my Moby one, my Moby, my TFNN.Moby? Usually it's just right there. All right, well, it'll be there. You will see that there's another cup formation. We've seen a number of these, and you've got a couple of dojis here, and they're telling us that... Either this is a halfway marker or you're getting kind of toppy here because the, the, the MACD and stochastic are really strong and yet the price is not broken out. I tend to go with that reading. Next, consider it this way, that you have got your foot on the accelerator and you pump it hard. Unfortunately, you're on sand or ice. So you've got a lot of wheel spin, a lot of energy used. Look at the OBV, look at the on-bounce volume, the blue line. Look at the MACD holding steady at 93%. Look at the MACD. And yet, for the past four weeks, gold has not been able to break even above the modest high of 1800.90 that was made in February, the week of February, no, of March the 2nd. And then if you had to go back to the 1934 highs of, of September, um, you know, something's going on here that says, uh, wheel spin, wheel spin. Look at the EUR USD. The euro currency is at, uh, let me get rid of that. Right there. The euro is at 1.29711 in the weekly. Nice action above the line period moving average. The MACD is good. The stochastic is good. Here as well, it hasn't had enough energy yet. The week is only a couple of, not even a couple of hours old. And it hasn't had the energy yet um, from last week into today to break into the 1.30s, 1.30, 1 1.317 was the last high. Look at the daily chart. I'll expand this. I'm, I'm trying to, why is that not working? I have to just close it and open it again. I'm just trying to get this on my, my uh, cell phone so that my droid, so that you can, so I can see what you see and know whether to expand it or not. So what we're looking at is that the euro is faltering here in the daily. It should have been much stronger, but it actually hasn't broken down, but it could make, with a doji candle on Friday, it will make a right shoulder failure pattern in the Chapman wave if it takes out the doji low of 1.287 from the 3rd of October. I'll be right back. We'll talk about bonds, and we'll go to 877-927-6648. Ben in Tallahassee, straight off to this. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Cell. My pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, Dow is now down 34. S&P is down 633. S&P 500. 500 stocks have been quite a bit weaker than the Dow. Uh, 30 stocks. So to me, that's important. And the IWM is acting poorly. Q's are acting poorly. And of course, we looked at Apple. Uh, Apple uh, has just broken that left side, right side price time match. This is a key session for it. Is it going to spring back by the end of the day or tomorrow? Just to bounce back to say goodbye to its friends in that arch formation before going lower. Well, what's going to happen? But right now, it's a very weak stock and it's dragging the Q's down. Let's go to Ben in Tallahassee. Hi, Ben. How are you? Ben, you're there. Oh, interesting. All right, well, I'll start talking because he wanted to know about the IWM. Ben? Yeah. Yep, yeah, you're there. Good. Sorry about that. No, that's no problem. Um, yeah, how you doing, Basil? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Um, do you see the IWM weekly in a peak C and a monthly in a peak E? with the monthly being strong and showing signs the weekly should reach a peak D. Okay. So this is what I get. If you count the I, – folks, we're looking at the iShares, the, the, the Russell uh, 2000 index. 
a trust fund is trading at 83.60. It's down 51 cents. If I go to the left side low bar of the week of the 7th of October of 2011 at 60.09, where let me just open this up so that you can see it better, where it made um, a beautiful left side, right side price time match um, to the low back in mm, at 58.80 the week of the 27th of August 2010, that started a new move up. So I get peak A on the week of the 14th of October at 71.34. The next week was down just uh, uh, 5 cents lower. The high was 5 cents lower, so that's A. B is the week of the 28th of, of October of 2011. Pulls back, starts C and goes to C, uh, peak C at 83.22. Uh, one penny difference the next month. Good clue that it's pulling back. That was the week of the 3rd of February of 2012. Pulls back for one week and goes to a slightly higher high of 83.31. That's the week of the 17th of February. Pulls back, goes to another fractional high of 84.66 on the th week of the 30th of February 2012. And then pulls back avoids the left side, right side price time match, and in fact does a very nice thing. It makes a beautiful candle on the 8th of June at 72.94 as the stochastic went under 20% and then back over it, and the MACD, the fast moving average, that's this higher uh, technical tool over here that I'm circling, if you're looking at, uh, at Tiger TV or in the den. Now it starts a gray A, that's a rally, what I call it's a technical term, it's not a negative, but it is a rally retracement failure mode. I know it's a long term, but I just I like to I like my techniques to explain what we're looking at. And in this particular instance, what we're looking at is it is retracing back towards the old high and can fail at any point because that old high had very te poor technicals. So that I call it a retracement rally. I could call it a rally mode, but I call it a rally failure mode because at any point you've got to be prepared. But instead what it does, it goes to peak A at 81.84, pulls back, holds the nine-period exponential moving average, and then sidles very quietly. I don't think anybody's talked about this, but at 86.96, that is a new recovery high. And I just throughout the weekend, I kept hearing people talking about the, uh, the fiscal cliff and um, about... The, the horrible economic conditions, and I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, how can the small Russell 2000 get to a new recovery high? What does that mean? It means that it's gone to either new leg F, which could be very dangerous, or leg B, and then peak F or peak B, um, Pushing uh, wait, Basil, I, Basil, I think you missed a peak there on, on 820. You, you're right, I did. So this is C. This is F slash C. I noticed that. In fact, I think on my black background charts, you know, I've been trying to migrate. At least I'm trying my very best to get these charts updated so I can choose the very best medium by which I can show my charts. So I did miss one. Thank you so much for pointing it out. So this, yeah, so that was your question. You're absolutely right, but it's F slash C. Let me just explain, take a moment here to explain why. In the Chapman wave, if you haven't broken decisively below your starting point, that would be 60.9 back in uh, uh, October of 2011. If you make a new recovery high or all-time high even, you still have to reintroduce the old peak, which is E, make this an F, and you can go to the new one. And I'll explain what happens after this as soon as we get back. Good night, Ben. We'll be right back. Good. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, 
Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and... We are looking at the IWM, the iShares of the Russell 2000 Index, and uh, we're on with Ben in Tallahassee, and he came up with a, uh, I, when I went to my black background charts, I certainly had exactly what he was talking about. It's a white one that I missed. Now it's, I'm going to stick with the black. I, you know, for me, it's so important that the price just jumps out at me, and the most, if you semi-close your eyes and you're looking at the Tiger Technicians Hour right now on channel, on Tiger One, these are archived in channel Thirteen or eleven, I think. Um, you will see that if you the the price movement with the yellow line of the fast moving average just went stupendously with um, the fast moving average of the MACD, the line period differential, and the price that went together. Now they've gone back in a choppy relationship, and what's happened is that the MACD is flattened way below the previous high. That's the fast moving average. And yet the price has squeaked towards retesting the 86s and it had 153% gain from the March low of 2009 at 86.82. Pull back to where I'm going to click this so you can see it. The 200 period exponential moving average um, at 60.09. It touched it exactly. No, 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 no. It touched it. 60.09 was the low 
and that line at that particular point came in. Yeah, oh, it must have it must have gone undercut it by maybe a few cents. That's incredible on the monthly chart. As the stochastic was turning around, now I have a rule about the stochastic, and that has to do with what happens when when there's a new rally that begins when the stochastic is either halfway or at the top, and that says you got to kind of be careful. You got to be careful because. You haven't got the impetus of the, of, the, of the start going all the way back to under 20%. So what you need to look at is how is price conforming to the other moving average or to the left side um, previous high. So what I'm looking at here now, and that, I love the way that this works. There are so many times when I'm looking at a potential top in a stock or an index or whatever it is, and if I look at the daily and I know that if on Thursday afternoon into Friday morning there is a sudden sell-off from new new highs, recovery highs or whatever it is, but highs in the daily or weekly, it means that when Monday comes along, if there's a very sharp pullback, it's very difficult intra-bar, the next bar, whether it's a daily or a weekly or a monthly, to garner enough energy to go back to make a new recovery high. So this is the first week of the you know, last when was uh, this is the second week of the new month last week you gapped down and you've been underneath 86.96 that makes that area if i i don't want to do it now to get a little too too messy if i put in the weekly in the monthly chart I, i'll just do it and then i'll get rid of it one of those one of those uh rectangles that says in this area there has been tremendous um resistance and if that resistance continues, you should be pulling back to the nearest safety or cushion on the downside, and that would be 80.57, the nine period exponential moving average. So the monthly is saying it's really clear. A decisive break in the 87.90 to the 88.20 area in uh, October will accelerate and create this leg up, which will still be leg um E in the month, no, have I missed something? Yeah, I did. Uh, it's 86.82. No, and that, that would create leg E in the monthly, slash, in this case, B. And that would be very positive because it says, you know what, you, you survive the whole month of September, the whole month of October, traditionally notorious months, to the upside, and there will be a positive. So all I can say is that those are the parameters. My bias right now, even though in my stock position in, in, in the portfolio for subscribers, is uh, a slightly more positive bias because we haven't yet got the shorts that I wanted to implement uh, today. Um, it's a, but there are very small positions. Most Two are small positions to the long side, very small positions, and one is my usual entry point. And they're holding pretty well. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, when I went through my charts over the weekend of, of IBD top 20, actually it was even more than that, the top 20, I'm getting signals that say many of them are really close to some kind of at least a near-term pullback, if not a more intermediate term. I have to wait for the evidence for them to actually start the big pullback. Some of them are right at almost new highs, but or very close. So when I look at the IWM, which of course is the smaller caps, I'm looking at it and saying, wow, this is, the daily says I've made a leg C, probably a peak C minus if it goes underneath in the next few days, if it closes under 83. But if it closes under 83, the 80 to 84 level looks highly vulnerable. And the weekly chart says, <laughs> I, I'm going to still call it F slash C, but a weekly chart says if it starts to close underneath that nine period moving average um, in the daily, the stochastic will go lower than 77%. It's probably going to go to 65%. So the weight of evidence says my, my bias is to be negative. But the proof of the pudding is if in the next, by Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, uh, Thursday morning, if the IWM is not taking out 85.25, the high of the 5th of October, but instead is starting to make lower lows, the proof of the pudding is then that we're in a consolidation phase. And it doesn't have to be deep at this point 
But I have to consider that, and we're all, at least those of us in the, looking at the Chapman wave are all looking to see whether the Dow is going to turn out to be leg F and then a peak F going into uh, November or December, or whether this is an alternate wave count, and in the Dow's case it would be alternate count, either leg uh, F right now or new leg B. So the evidence on the weekly and the monthly charts so far is that I've got to keep holding to uh, the bias of the long side, the short-term 120-minute charts and daily charts are saying, uh-uh, this is, this is going to be a tough tough week. Be careful. Wow. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Basil. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you so much for calling. You gave me a chance to elaborate on stuff that I always like to do. So very it was good. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. I appreciate your call. We had a question in the den about GNC, and I'm sure I've done this. GNC, I know I've done it in black. Yeah. GNC is uh, GNC Holdings. Of course, I should know what it is. Uh, GNC, let me quickly look it up. And I, I at least like to know what they do, even though I'm a technician, it doesn't really matter. Uh, GNC, holding someone by now is already typed in the dens, in the den what it is. Oops, I typed it in the wrong place. GNC, holdings. There you go. Uh, oh, yes, of course, vitamins, supplements, minerals, herbs, sports nutrition, diet and energy, and health and beauty products. Uh, did I skip anything there? Vitamins, supplements, minerals, herbs, herbs, sorry, American herbs, sports nutrition, diet and energy, and health and beauty products. Um, hmm. All right, so they're in the, what they, we would call health products. Uh, if you ask some physicians, that's always a bit of a question whether some of them are. They don't pass FDA uh, regulations, but we'll call them health products for now and avoid any conflagration in the den. But what we're looking at is leg C up at 40.79. GNC is the symbol, up thirteen. Excellent action. In fact, this is a chart that I like. Um, it needs to do one thing. And that is today's action is very important in that. Uh, yeah, let me just change the color here. Go into a black background chart. Why? Because it's already notated. Okay, here we go. Um, there's a rectangle formation. This rectangle formation is actually more like it looks like a boat, like a, one of those old galleons. Goes like this and then around like that. And it says there's a really good chance that if it closes, GNC closes above 40.94, that's just, what, 23 cents away, uh, 25 cents away, today or tomorrow, that would start confirm. well, it's already confirmed leg C, but it would be a very positive leg C, because the stochastic is at 75% and rising strongly, and the MACD is cross positive. I like it. Congratulations if you're in it. I believe that the question in the den, Ali, is in it. And so the daily is good. The weekly chart has got this rectangle formation, and that's a larger rectangle formation. And that's very positive on the shorter term, that's shorter to intermediate term, but Two things have to happen. There has to be a decisive break above 42.70. Oh, man, changing these colors. Maybe it was not a good idea. Full color. Let's go to gray. All right, let's go to blue. Full color. Here we go. It's driving me a little bonkers here. Ah, there we go. So that would be leg B. And then if there's a break above 42.70... Oh, I love this chart. I love this chart from the very beginning. I never got into it. It was an IPO at 16.08 low back in February of 2011. reason why I love it is it's in the Chapman Wave. It's gone to peak C with a wide-legged doji. That wide-legged doji says, anticipate that this stock is going to go above 4270. And it doesn't matter how far it can go above it. I'm suspecting about a point, about 80 cents to a point and three quarters higher. Then it should pull back. Why? Because at some point, and it's done a lot of work to do that, it's going to test the wick, the candle, sorry, the candle body of 39.34 to 38.53 even if it goes higher. But right now, it's looking very good. It's in a niche area that says, regardless of the economy, 
vitamins could still keep doing well. I like it. Your biggest problem would be is by Friday afternoon, if it closes, I don't think it will, but if it closes under 38.50, and right now it's at 30 at 40.78. Good eye. I like this very much. Now, um, okay, here's what I wanted to do. Uh, just oh IBB. I heard I heard I, I, I saw the chart. I didn't actually have a chance to hear exactly what the conversation was um, about IBB, and I've been focusing on this for a while. Um, IBB is the Nasdaq Biotech ETF. Now this is what I'm talking about. It has had there are so many stocks, especially in the Nasdaq Biotech area, that have had spectacular moves, and the moves have gone like this. In this case, it's gone from a low of 118.29, the 4th of June. It's gone peak A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Unusual that you can go to G, but you can go to G. 138.75 was on the 27th of July. Pulls back, forms what became the up-channel support area. And then what does it do? It walks that line, both the nine-period moving average, the nine, that's the, the maroon color there. Let me expand this a little bit. And... What does it do? It makes a beautiful doji candle, long-legged, which has to be tested, which it does get tested. It gets tested on the 13th of the low of the 2nd of August, starts a new buy mode. It goes ABCD to a doji high on the 29th of August. Just one quick pullback, goes back above the nine period moving average. Within, folks, in my CD introducing the Chapway methodology, I talk about the buy, the, the, the inside track buy mode and sell mode. I've, I've changed the name to reversal or containment area or repellent, propellant areas. Basically, what I look at is that if a stock tells me that whenever it gets into this particular area, there's going to be a reversal, I want to make note of it. I want to say, okay, great. When it got back there, when it went to the next peak D on the 21st of September at 145.23, this is IBB trading at 145.75, down a dollar 43. It goes to peak D, pulls back, holds the green line. That's the buy, that's the buy mode. If it had to close under the red line, I'd say, oh, red means you could be going down. When it broke above the green line earlier on, uh, back in July and August, uh, briefly, it fell back into the channel very quickly. So that was a clue that, um, it, yes, it could exceed that particular parameter, and then it could come right back in. So now what we've got is a chance that we've made a peak E top, fifth highest peak in the with a doji candle uh, last week is, uh, last week on Friday, and now we're pulling back. If the IBB closes under 145, there's a good chance it's going to retest the 143.143.20 to 142.90 area, which is this inside track buy mode, if it holds it, that's fantastic. If it closes under it, I bet it will close under 139.98. And why do I say that? Because the weekly chart, although it's solid, starting to show a little deterioration in the stochastic, which is now at 91% instead of the 93.95 that it's been in. NACD is still positive, but the daily is the one that will lead it to the downside. And the gray area shows exactly where you can expect the consolidation to go to, somewhere around there. Oh, it's not showing up. But what we're looking at is 141.58 is the nine-period exponential moving area support. So if this week there is a break lower by Wednesday, closes under 145, I say, hey, be careful. The IBB could finally be giving a leg D up in the monthly chart, and you'd have to wait all of October before you get a confirmation that there is a peak D because it hasn't broken above 148.54. Meantime, MACD and stochastic in the monthly charts are still fabulous. So we're going real short term from the daily to possibly a little bit more intermediate term in the uh, in the weekly. Uh, when we get back, I'm going to talk about the TLT. Um, yeah, the TLT is at 121.89, up 74 cents. Very critical week for the TLT based on the weekly chart. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, 877-927-6648. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. 
Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. Yeah, just real quickly, I had a question... Um about the E-minis, the ESZ12, that's the uh, December E-mini S&P contract, 500 contract. Um, <clears throat> yes, I did get a peak after the Chapman Wave at 1466 on Friday. Remember, I spoke about that, and now it's pulled back. It's gone underneath that pink zone. It's in the white zone. So the, very important uh, intraday that the four, uh, 1447 level holds, and today so far we've made a low of 1447.50. Um, I'm not going to presuppose anything. This is right in the time frame where there could be a little bit of a balance. Most importantly, the resistance would be uh, 1451.50 to 1454.50 between the now, this afternoon, and this evening. But support is very important because if, 14, if the 14. 
42 to 43 support goes, then we're looking at a lot of weakness because 40-42 is a 200 period moving average support. I just wanted to get that out the way. It was a question. I love to answer the questions. So the TLT. The TLT right now is trading at 121.85. Let me go quickly through the different time frames. The daily is, is trapped between 118.05. I'd even say that it's a little higher right now, 119.50 to the upside of um, 125.24. But basically what happens if it takes out 125.24, it starts leg D up if it does in the next few days. That would say watch out because that, that will uh, initiate selling in the stock market probably in buying in the bonds once again. At this particular point, it's making lower lows and lower highs. I can't make it more simple than that. Lower lows and lower highs means it needs to snap through the uh, 125.24 level to start to change that because all of a sudden now you're looking at higher highs and higher lows. So it's real simple. The technicals are mag stochastic is very weak at 59. MACD is right on the cusp of either deflecting up higher or inflecting lower. That's the daily. The weekly chart is very important because why? Weekly chart says there is an up channel, an up, uh, up, up track that has held very, very well. And that up track says that in, in this week, if 119.31 is hit, there's a real good chance it's going to test 118.05, which would be the low of four weeks ago. I can tell you this, that if this up channel breaks, there's a real good chance that stocks will benefit, even if they don't go up very much. Money will still flow into them, and that's very important. The monthly chart, I'll discuss because it's a little complicated. There's no time now. I've got an alternate count, and you could make a case that was a D top of the last, the last peak. I'm calling it C right now in the Chapman wave. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to presuppose. Now, just let's look at these things. I'll go to the black charts for a minute because I'm pretty sure that most of them are done. In the black charts... SWI, this is number one on the IBD50. SWI is solar winds. That made it, is making a leg E in the monthly, a peak E with a doji top at 60.95 in the weekly, and a, a G in the, in the daily. And it says to me there's a good chance that if it breaks underneath 53, it's a 56.32. If it breaks under 53.80 the next few days, uh, it's made at least a short intermediate term top. Um, and if it breaks to new high, obviously all of these, if they break to new highs, that's very positive. I'm talking about where they are. Look at this. The dreaded H goes to an M in Mellanox at 102.50, down $1.23. Decisive a peak D in the daily. I'm not sure. I've got a G with a silent doji in the weekly, and the technicals are failing. And an F, a peak F coming if there's no new high this month. Uh, look at number three, Alexon, A-L-X-N, pharmaceuticals. A question, is this, uh, is this new? Yeah, it has to be. Well, the wave count, this is definitely what I would call a flat-based restart in the weekly. And the daily, which says even if it goes high, it's probably going to come back and test 111.31. It's at 116.01 now. It made a high of 119.54 on Friday. And leg D, in the, so, so far, this is holding very well. I haven't got the sell signal yet, but I think it's getting real close. And you can just go all the way through. Michael Kors, Catamaran, all of them. They're really close to some kind of a pullback. Hey, folks, watch Dow uh, 30,430 in the next few. Are you looking for a precision?